Hello friends, this video on Kinetic Theory Part 28 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from Part 1 to Part 27 before going ahead with Part 28. So we talked about gases and solids, now let us talk about liquids. So we will talk about the specific heat capacity of water. Let us treat water as solid. Let us treat water as solid. As I said solid had n atoms. Let us consider water also has n atoms. Therefore for each atom the average energy is equal to 3 kb into t considering the three dimensions. Now for water how many atoms do we have in water? H2O. So we have a total of 3 atoms. Therefore, the total internal energy will be 3 kVT into 3 for the 3 atoms into Na. That is the number of molecules in each atom. So this would be 9RT. Therefore, Cv is equal to Cp will be equal to 9R. Now this value 9R also agrees approximately with the experimental value. So now I hope that after seeing so many things you would have been clear to you that how do we calculate specific heat capacity depending on the number of degrees of freedom. We will discuss something very interesting about specific heat capacity and its relation to degree of freedom. Now, whatever we studied so far, we saw that according to classical mechanics, classical mechanics tells that the predicted specific heat which we calculated depending on the degrees of freedom should be independent of temperature because the term T never came into picture when we talked about specific heat. So it, so it said that specific heat is independent of temperature. That means degree of freedom has nothing to do with temperature. However, if you see in reality, that is however, at T tends to 0, when temperature reaches 0, at that time degree of freedom doesn't come into play. Degree of freedom becomes inefficient and frozen at that time which is very obvious because when there is when the temperature is zero degree of freedom is basically the motion of the it talks about the motion of the atoms right so degree of freedom doesn't come into picture at all when the temperature approaches zero so how do we explain this contradiction this shows that classical mechanics was not enough to explain this contradiction Therefore came the quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics explained or stated that a minimum non-zero energy is required, a minimum non-zero amount of energy is required for degree of freedom to come into play. That means in order that degree of freedom comes into picture, a small amount of energy has to be supplied. That is what was stated by the quantum mechanics. But before that, in classical mechanics, it, was, it, it used to be like that specific heat is independent of temperature. Specific heat does not depend on temperature at all. But that was not a correct conclusion. So specific heats of all substances approach zero as T tends to zero. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.